Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase Pro 15. Today I'm gonna to show you a different way to punch in that'll allow you to hear the track that you're punching in over and yourself at the same time. It's so simple, you'll be surprised that you haven't thought of it earlier. Let's do it. Okay, so we're here in Cubase, and the first step is for me to play something that I'll probably screw up so we can punch in over it. So let me just set up the song start point, turn off my VO, and we'll do a little bit of playing. Cool. So now we just gotta find a place where I screwed up. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, so in that first sort of walk down part, I hear a little bit of sloppiness. Let's see. So we'll start here at the last note because it's a good place to punch in. And I have uh, some hotkeys set up that set my left and right locators to the cursor position. So I'm just pushing those now. And we'll set the left locator here. The traditional way to punch in and out is to set this up. But the thing is, even though I have tape machine mode on, and you can find that here in your preferences, VST tape machine style. So I think this is the way that it comes by default is uh, manual. And so you can't hear the backing track when you're trying to punch in. Uh, oops. Okay, so. <laughs> And that's just no good. So the tape machine style is a sort of a fix for that. So you'll have your backing track and we'll put on tape machine style again. I'll go to edit, preferences, the VST menu of preferences down here at the bottom and switch this to tape machine style. And then it'll only allow me to monitor my guitar while recording, apply, okay. So let's do that little punch in real quick. Oops. So let's do that little punch in real quick. And we'll, uh, you know, do a quick little bit of editing, Studio Magic. And we have ourselves a punch in. Let's take a listen. I mean, it's not the cleanest, but you get the idea. Now, what if I wanted to do this new method? Well, I could just delete this part and then use a macro called duplicate track without data. And you can set up a macro in the key command. I'll just search for duplicate tracks without data. Duplicate, so you just search for duplicate in the key commands then you can assign anything you want to it. I'll assign control alt D to it, uh, assign. And then we'll go back in. I can unmonitor this, control alt D. Ooh, oops. And I create a brand new track. Now this one's not being monitored. This way I can use the monitoring in the traditional setting also, which I am very used to. I, don't, I mean, people like the tape machine, but uh, okay. Okay, and now I'll be able to hear myself while the track's playing and while I'm recording with the track underneath it. So let's record this. <laughs> through the magic of Studio Magic, we can just trim this up. Uh, 
and hit control and drag it into the other track. And now we have a full-fledged take. But the nice thing about it is that I can hear myself play. While the other track is playing and while I'm recording, I get full monitoring control. I'm just adding a different track. So it's not really punching in at all. It's adding an extra track, but it preserves all the processing that was on the original track because you're duplicating the track without data. So this has just been a quick dip on a different way to consider doing punching in and out in Cubase. If the monitoring thing drives you or a client who you're recording crazy, this is a way to allow them to hear the backing track and hear themselves at the same time. I hope you found it useful. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and goodbye.